Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Coming Home. So, we're going to be joining F and F for its Fury Approach. So this is a craft we designed in the last episode and it is of course our first ever interplanetary craft. And <laughs> it's called Fast and Furious because, well, I couldn't really think of a better name. We're going to Fury and in fact, as you may be able to tell on screen right now, we have indeed arrived at Fury. So what this is going to be is this is going to be a craft that we put in a polar inclination of Fury. We're going to get all of those lovely scans. It has so many scan sat sanders on there and it also contains three of these little landing pods which we are going to try and attempt to land in different locations on Fury. So this is the first one that we are going to be sending down there you go we can see we have released the payload fairings and now this craft is ready to be put gently hopefully on the surface of fury we are going to be using parachutes because fury has a very thick atmosphere so we might as well <laughs> utilize that atmosphere to our advantage but there you go we can see we have touched down with the first of the landers and everything went according to plan so we are going to be landing the other two. Now, an issue that I did have with this mission is I was unable to get constant communication with road. Basically, the relay antennas that I have on the main, the main polar orbiter, they can only connect to road when Fury and road are closest together, which is a bit of a shame. So we keep running out of communication. Anyway, the second lander did fail because the parachute wouldn't deploy because it thought that it was still stowed and I couldn't do the F5 and the F9 little fix to actually try and fix that due to the fact that, well, I was in the atmosphere and it wouldn't let me do that. So we did lose the second one, unfortunately, which means we're not going to be able to fulfill the Strategia contract. So we are going to have to send another mission over to Fury. But the third one did work perfectly. You can see we have deployed this. We have landed somewhere near the North Pole of Fury and we get an amazing view of the Aurora. So now what we're going to be doing for pretty much the entire rest of this episode is we are going to be following on from the last live stream I did. So the quick recap of that live stream was we attempted to put our first surface base down on Armstrong and we failed miserably. There's not really much point going and checking that out if you're watching this, but I'll put a card to that now so you can go and see that if you want to. So yes, we failed to put our surface base down on Armstrong due to the base disappearing into the ground. Armstrong wasn't quite as solid as we we thought it was so the rest of this video is going to be attempting to do that again this time with the knowledge of how to actually put down a base safely on the surface so we have launched our payload into orbit now what we're going to be doing is we are going to be using fmrs to try and recover the first stage so i want to use reusability in this series i want to go the spacex route and try and recover boosters and that's exactly what we're doing now we have used parachutes on this first stage but there you go we can see we are coming down very gently and there we go we have touched down on the ground we have done our first recovery of a first stage booster but with that being done it is time to pay attention to the main mission we have made our way to orbit. Now what we're going to be doing is we are going to be performing our burn to go over to Armstrong. So in this mission, what we have here is we have three separate modules for the surface base that we are going to be setting down. You can see the solar power module and the habitation module. Those were the two that were kind of closest to us in that last shot. And we also have at the, well, at the closest side to the actual stage that has just completed its burn that was an agroponics module so that will help us when it comes to feeding our colonists there we go we have made our way into a safe and stable a nice armstrong orbit what we're going to do is we are going to use this little orange tank this is our sky crane and this will be taking every part of this base from orbit it will then land it on the surface of Armstrong, place it, move it around so that the base pieces are all connected, and then it will go back up to orbit, rendezvous with the other pieces, and slowly but surely, we will be constructing our surface base. So the first piece that we are gonna be sending down is going to be this habitation module. And the reason why we're sending this down first is because this actually has a command section on it. So on those in the, in the center is our actual manned or kerbled command section, but on the habitation modules either side of that, 
we do have a couple of probe cores, so this thing will always have control. But you can see we have landed in the gorges, and I tried to get as close to the gentle slopes as I could. Unfortunately, I am a little bit too far away, I think, for this base to eventually reach those gentle slopes, but I thought it was a nice little place to set down. It's relatively flat. We've got a bit of a view with the hills over on in the distance. And now what we've done is we have relaunched the Sky Crane and we are going to be performing our Ronde maneuver with some of those pieces of, well, they're technically debris in orbit because they don't have any probe cores on them, but they're not debris. No, they, they are going to perform a very useful function. The next piece that I am going to be putting down is going to be this agroponics unit. It's kind of a central piece the way that I've designed it. And that's why it doesn't have any of those landing legs because I thought if I put some of those landing legs on this, it would have made it really difficult to actually piece this all together once we got onto the surface of Armstrong. And you can see I did kind of mess up a little bit there by docking it the wrong way around. A quick flip and we were able to rectify that, but it is time to descend this piece onto the surface of Armstrong. You can see I am using Kerbal Engineer Redux to try and fine tune my landing location as close as I can to the pieces that we have already put down. This mod is incredibly useful for being able to do a targeted landing. That reticule is very nice to have to really fine tune where we're actually going to land. And you can see I am only 45 meters away from the first module of the base that we have set down, which is glorious. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna be doing a bit of a hopping maneuver, a bit of a hovering maneuver, so we can move these pieces together and connect them. I don't have any wheels on this base, so the entire construction is going to have to be done with the Sky Crane. But with that, there you go. We can see we have connected the Agroponics module. And now what we're going to be doing is once again, we are going to be launching the Sky Crane into a low road orbit. And we are going to grab that final piece of the base for this section. That final piece is going to be our solar power module. And that is going to be vitally important to actually provide power generation for the entire base. We are going to have to launch a couple of battery modules later on because the night on Armstrong is actually going to take a day and nine hours. So because we're only using solar panel, solar power, for our base, well, we are going to need some pretty hefty batteries to survive those long Armstrong nights. But once again, we have docked with this solar power module. We are going to fire up our engines retro and we are once again going to try and come down as close to that base as possible. So it's really easy to actually maneuver this when we finally get down. There we go. Once again, that landing reticule has really helped and we can see we are coming down incredibly close to the Armstrong surface base. And any minute now, we will be touching down on the ground. And it is just a little bit of wobbling, <laughs> small maneuver to try and fine tune that final little landing. There you go. We are inches away now. And it's just a bit of another hop before we finally connect. So I did kind of limit the thrust on that sky crane just to make this as easy as possible. But there we go. We have connected our base together. And at the moment, I'm just going to be calling this Armstrong Colony 1. And of course, let's rename this. So if you have a suggestion for the name of our first ever colony on this series, why not leave your suggestion down in the comments below? And what we will do is we will put all of those suggestions together and we will put it to a vote over on the Discord. We can actually have a decent name for this colony. But now that we have set that up, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be returning to the Space Center and we are going to be hiring our next three Kerbal applicants to center their deaths. I mean to send over to the Armstrong surface base. And what I've done is I have gone down through the list on the Discord and I have selected the next three who are in line to be part of this space program. So I do want to use this time to just announce that I have also now set up a Patreon. And if you want to support this channel, I will leave a link to that in the description. There are a few perks at the moment, such as skipping the queue for a Kerbal applicant and of course the standard Patreon stuff getting your name in the end of a video, all those kind of things. So if you feel like supporting me, why not check it out? It will be in the description of this video. But now we are going to be launching our batteries to the Armstrong surface base. So this is 
ASB1 batteries on a reusable test too. This is basically the entire same mission that we did just send over to Armstrong just not that long ago, except rather than having some major components for the surface base, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be launching two massive batteries. I did already talk about it. Armstrong has a long night and we are going to have to somehow survive through the night, especially when we've got crew on board. We wouldn't want them to die. No, the Road Planetary Space Alliance laughs in the face of death and, well, it, it, it would like to, but unfortunately we have had a, <laughs> a lot of deaths already in this series and we, we want to avoid any more. But once again, we are going to be attempting to land our first stage booster. So we are really starting to think about reusability in this series. Unfortunately, we were coming down a little bit too quick for those parachutes to deploy. So this had to be a completely propulsive landing and it looks like we are going to be able to touch down safely. But unfortunately, for some reason, it did a bit of a wobble when we were performing our last little bit of a landing and then, of course, you saw, well, we didn't manage to recover the entire stage. We recovered some of it, though, so it's not the end of the world. But of course, now that that's been done, we are going to be turning over to the main mission and we are going to be starting our burn over to Armstrong so that we can go to Armstrong and that we can put this base down on the surface of that moon. And then as soon as this is done, well, that is actually going to be our surface base ready for some Kerbal inhabitants and well I, I am quite excited for this. This is our start on the long road to colonization and colonization is going to be very tricky. I have personally been watching a lot of tutorial videos on how to use USI. I've been watching Mark Throom. I've been watching a bit of Beardy's Endurance and Beyond Kerbal as well just to try and pick up as many tips as I can. Obviously USI is something that I've never used before so this is a massive learning experience for me as well. You can see we have left those batteries in orbit. We are going to deorbit our transfer station over to here that leaves the sky crane and the two batteries in low road orbit not low road orbit low armstrong orbit a great thing about this mission is that we don't leave any debris at all so as soon as we deorbit that transfer stage well that goes smashing into the surface of armstrong the sky crane we will get rid of as soon as we have done with it obviously the base parts we are going to be landing the base parts so they are going to be remaining on the surface of road of road why do i have road on my mind of armstrong so they are going to be useful so and obviously we re well we try <laughs> to recover the first stage booster but there we go we have actually landed this piece now and we just need to deploy those landing legs so that we can actually connect this up together there we go wonderful that is the first of two batteries down so i did need two batteries just because of how much power draw we are using for that agroponics unit i was well, I really tried a long time to figure out how I could fit it all into one, but unfortunately that wasn't going to be possible. So we do have these two massive towers. There we go. We have a bit of a funny landing there. That that was that was almost, almost a tragedy, but no, we did manage to recover it. And there you go. We can see we have connected up the final battery. The base is now complete. All we need to do is actually come to the vehicle assembly building and we are going to work on our crew transfer vehicle that we are going to be sending over. This, at the moment, is just called the Armstrong Bus Number 1, although when I get to the actual launch, I've decided to call this DNS, or definitely not Starship. This is, well, obviously Starship has been on everyone's minds at the moment with the SN8 flight and SN9 doing a bit of a... <laughs> doing a bit of a... Funny maneuver in the assembly building, and I thought I would go for something that kind of doesn't exactly look like Starship, but it kind of follows the same principles that Starship is going to be doing. So this vehicle, if it works, is going to be fully reusable. We are not going to lose anything, and it's only going to be two stages. So this is going to be our upper stage, which is going to land on Armstrong, it is going to get us to Armstrong, it is going to do all of our orbital maneuvers, and it is going to return us home and then hopefully land safely. And then the first stage is just going to be a ginormous booster, which is going to get us into orbit originally. And that is what I'm working on now. I have put a probe core on there and some parachutes so that hopefully we can safely return this. And of course, we are going for one of the Rockamax huge tanks 
Uh, because we are going to need a lot of fuel to actually get this up to orbit. But now that we have our fuel tank, now it is time for me to um and ah for ages over what engines I'm actually going to use on this first stage. And I have gone with the mainsails. So they are a rather expensive first stage. So it'd be really nice if we could actually recover this stage. I haven't gone for the generic stock mainsails though. No, I have tweak scaled them down a little bit because if I used four mainsails on this, well, that would provide a ridiculous amount of thrust. <laughs> it would be altogether way too much and it would look rather silly and we would probably just end up killing our Kerbals through the sheer amount of G-forces that we subject them to. But there we go. We can see we have placed some grid fins. <laughs> you can see what I mean. This is definitely not Starship. Definitely not. But anyway, we are now going to come to the launch. Here we go. We are just going to do a bit of a nice cinematic shot through the clouds. Here it is, DNS on RUT3. We have Oliver Kerman, Evan Kerman, and Nedlik Kerman, our three new Kerbanauts who are going to be risking their lives to try and further the Road Planetary Space Alliance's agenda of colonizing absolutely everywhere in the Tempest system, and then obviously eventually over in the Kerbal system as well. We have made our way into orbit, and we are using some of those lovely informative flight screens from Asset Avionics. Someone asked me what mod that was from. So the IVA mods that I am running are Asset Avionics and Raster Prop Monitor for those lovely IVA views. And the actual cockpit for this comes from B9 Aerospace, I believe. I might be wrong, but there we go. We have got our main orbiter into orbit. And now what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be attempting to bring down the first stage. You can see I was actually going about 1500 meters per second at the start of that burn. That left me a little bit concerned that we weren't gonna be able to bring this down safely because we basically used this first stage a little bit too much. It almost got us to orbit because the second stage, well, we needed it to get us that high and that fast. Unfortunately, that meant that slowing down was going to be rather difficult. And there we go. We can see we had an unfortunate rapid unplanned disassembly. We were able to safely bring the probe core back down though, but that didn't really matter. That was one of the cheaper components of that first stage booster. So all in all, a bit of a catastrophic failure, but we are going to be returning to the orbiter on its flight over to Armstrong there it comes now looking ever so beautiful as always the gray and brown version of minimus basically it is just a quick burn to slow us into a nice stable armstrong orbit before we begin our final descent down onto the surface and there we go we have our Armstrong colony in full view now, and we are going to try and get a little bit closer. Well, it was a little bit too far away. It wasn't too far away, but I, I didn't want our brave Kerbinauts having to stretch their legs too much. I thought it would be nice if we parked them as close as we possibly could to the base. And of course, we are just going to be getting those three out and transferring them over to the colony, where they are going to remain for a little while. Our first test at sending Kerbals on a long duration mission on another body. But with our Kerbals safely transferred over to the Armstrong colony, that will be the end of this episode. And I do just want to give a massive shout out to the gentleman FR for his support in donating to this channel. Thank you very, very much for that donation. But with that, I have been Karnasa and I will see you later. <laughs>